Hey everyone and welcome to another weekly art video. I hope you're having an amazing day and thanks so much for joining me on this one. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my main tips that I always apply whenever I am painting a landscape with watercolor in order to create a believable sensation of open space and depth. Even though I'm going to be providing specific examples of how to apply these tips when painting with watercolor, and even though I'm going to be sharing a few of my watercolor landscape process videos with you as I'm explaining these tips and examples, do know that the tips that I'm going to be sharing next really apply for any kind of drawing or painting medium. And not only this, but these tips can also be used to create very interesting effects and a believable sensation of depth when you're painting things like still life arrangements, portraits, etc. All right, so without much further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight in. These three key tips that I'm going to be sharing next all revolve around something that is called atmospheric or aerial perspective. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but in case you haven't, atmospheric or aerial perspective has been used by artists since the Renaissance, along with linear perspective, like one, two, and three point perspective, in order to create that optical illusion of open space and depth on a flat two dimensional surface, like a piece of paper, canvas, wall, or whatever it is that you are drawing or painting on. Both at atmospheric or aerial perspective and linear perspective techniques go hand in hand with how we see things in real life. If you're looking to improve your landscapes and scenes, I want to encourage you to go outside whenever you have a chance to stand in a wide open space, whether you are out in nature or a park or in a city, it doesn't matter. Notice the difference between how you see detail and color in the buildings, in the trees, in the elements in general that are closest to you versus the elements that are farther away. You're going to notice a huge difference. Not only do things get smaller the farther away they get from you, of course, they're always going to be very big things in nature scenes and also in urban scenes such as mountains and buildings that are going to be quite large. But generally speaking, things get smaller and smaller the farther away they get from you. And linear perspective tells us this, which by the way, if you have no idea what linear perspective is and you want to learn more about one and two point perspective, I'm going to make sure to leave a blog post where I explain all of that down below in the text section of this post if you'd like to go and check that out. However, aside from the element's size, the level of detail and the color in these elements also changes. Atmospheric or aerial perspective tells us that things that are closest to us are going to be darker in value or tone. Color in elements is going to appear more saturated. We're going to see a greater amount of detail or texture in elements that are closest to us. And also colors temperature tends to get warmer the closer the thing is to us. Whereas things that are farther away are going to be lighter in value or tone. Color is going to appear less saturated or weaker. They are going to be hazier, blurrier, or less detailed. And color temperature is going to be bluer or cooler. And by simply making sure that you're bringing in these key points into your artwork, you're going to be able to arrive at much more believable results, even when you're painting a scene from imagination. You can make use of these key ideas offered by the atmospheric or aerial perspective technique. You can use linear perspective, or you can use a combination of both. And it's very important that you know about these things, which really are art fundamentals, because if you don't know about these things and you don't practice your observational skills to see and take note of what things look like in real life, most likely than not, your pieces are going to lack that depth to them. And another thing that I've seen happen a lot is that beginners want to add the same amount of detail all throughout the piece, even in background layers or elements, which makes these background elements compete 
with the elements that are closest to us or with the focal point, and this can certainly be an issue. Remember that the more detail you add into an area, the heavier visual weight it'll have, and so you'll pull the viewer's attention to that area. If everything all throughout your piece has the same amount of visual weight, the viewer won't know what to see first and what to move on to next because everything is equally important. An area that is more detailed or more textured is gonna have a heavier visual weight than an area that is less detailed and less textured. So ask yourself, where do you wanna pull the viewer's attention towards and where does it make sense for my elements to be more detailed? And this is something that I also struggled with in the beginning. I wanted to add the same amount of detail to everything, but it leads to paintings that are sometimes way too overwhelming to look at. They lack that realism, and at the same time, they also lack a balance between looser, less detailed areas and tighter, more detailed areas. Things that are farther away shouldn't have the same amount of detail as things that are closer to the viewer of the scene. So making use of these things not only makes the piece look more believable, but it also balances the piece out with active areas and inactive areas, which is also key when you're trying to develop balanced visual compositions. And this is something that I see even right in front of me through my window. I live in a city where I am surrounded by these huge, beautiful mountains. And right in front of me right now, I see three mountains. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a picture on screen that I just took right now so that you can see what I mean. One of them is closer, one of them is in between, and the other one is farthest away. The mountain that is closest to me appears darker, it appears greener and warmer, and I can see more detail in that mountain. I can see the texture of trees. The mountain in between is less detailed, is lighter in value, is more grayed out and wider, cooler in temperature. And I see some detail, but not nearly as much as I do in the first mountain. And then the mountain that is farthest away is coolest in temperature. It is super hazy, very white, lightest in value, and I barely see any detail in it at all. So if you want to increase the level of realism in your work, make sure that you are observing what things look like in real life and think of the specific techniques and methods that are going to help you arrive at those effects with whatever drawing or painting medium it is that you enjoy using. So to bring all of this down to three main tips that I always make sure to bring in when I am painting watercolor landscapes, but also other types of watercolor pieces in order to enhance that believable depth and also in order to improve the composition overall, Number one, I make sure to add greater amount of detail slash texture in elements that are closest to us as the viewer of the scene and less and less detail as those elements or layers get farther away from us. And the way that I do this with watercolor specifically is when I am painting those farthest away layers or elements, I use way more water or wet on wet techniques. This enables me to create soft blurred out edges and a diffused outlook. And when I am painting elements or things that are in the middle ground or the foreground, I use a less amount of water and perhaps I paint those wet on dry in order to arrive at sharper edges and a more defined look. So it's that combination between layers that I paint wet on wet and layers that I paint wet on dry. Furthermore, I add more detail to the elements that are closest to us as the viewer of the scene and less detail to the elements that are farther away. Number two, I make sure to paint closer elements darker in value and the farther away elements get lighter and lighter in value. The way that I do this when I'm painting with watercolor is I simply go ahead and add more water into the color mixtures that I'm going to be using to paint the elements that are farthest away in order to make that color appear paler and weaker than the color that I use in a more saturated way in the middle ground and the foreground. Because when we're painting with watercolor, the only thing we have to do to make a color appear lighter in value or tone 
is simply add more water into your color mixture. Inversely, if you want a color to appear darker or more saturated, simply add more paint into your mixture to saturate it even more and get it darker and use the paint in that way to paint in elements that are closest to the viewer. I'm gonna make sure to leave a video on water control and drills that are gonna help you improve your water control down below in the text section of this post so that you can go and check it out. I explain a super helpful exercise that I recommend any beginner getting started with watercolor practice in which you're using one same color to develop a wide variety of different values. And finally, key tip number three that I always apply myself is I make sure to play with color temperature. For example, when I am painting a nature scene or landscape that's gonna have grass and trees and plants, I make sure that the greens that I am using for the grass sections, the trees and the plants that are nearest to us as the viewer of the scene are warmer than the greens that are used in a faraway tree line in the distance or faraway plants and trees. Even just adding a little bit of blue into that green makes a huge difference in separating out visually what's closest and what is farthest away and altering that color temperature so that the green leans more towards the cool green side or blue green side combined with using that paint in a more watered down translucent state, like I mentioned with a previous tip, really creates a ton of depth. All right, so those are my main three tips. And I want to encourage you, the next time that you're working on a new piece, bring these points to mind and think of ways that you can incorporate them into your work and you'll likely arrive at much better results. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.